Welcome to Movie Class by Pizza Flicks, where you can pick up some interesting tidbits on today's program. He was one of nine children and initially began working as an actor to help support his large family. As a result, Jimmy Lydon had practically no formal education, but he did appear in school in his early films. At age 16, Lydon made his Hollywood debut in 1939's Back Door to Heaven as a young slum kid who winds up in a reform school. That same year, he also appeared in a Westinghouse promotional film, The Middleton Family, about a day at the World's Fair. One of his best known early roles is the title character in the 1940 film, Tom Brown's School Days. Also starring Cedric Hardwick, Freddie Bartholomew, and Billy Halep. Between 1941 and 44, under contract to Paramount Pictures, Lydon held down the title role in a series of movies as a screechy voice kid, Henry Aldrich. My personal favorite is Edgar G. Ulmer's Strange Illusion from 1945, with Lydon as an adolescent who has a recurring dream about his father's premature death. He appeared with William Powell, Irene Dunn, and Elizabeth Taylor in the acclaimed 1947 film, Life with Father. Later that year, Lydon again starred with Miss Taylor and gave the 15-year-old her first screen kiss in Cynthia. In 1948, Lydon was chosen by the great James Cagney to appear in his film company's production of The Time of Your Life. And let's not forget Victor Fleming's Joan of Arc, starring the incomparable Ingrid Bergman with Lydon as a younger brother. Lydon continued to work steadily in films through the mid-50s when he made the transition to the small screen, which brings us to today's featured presentation. Mother O'Brien, from the anthology TV series Crossroads, Season 1, Episode 23, originally broadcast March 9th, 1956, starring Jimmy Lydon, Ruth Donnelly, and Arthur Shields. A police detective is torn between family and career when he discovers his brother, Jimmy Lydon, is committing crimes to support his drug habit. I don't think I've ever heard anything like it. <laughs> Look at Dennis sitting there saying nothing. He should be happy that someone in this family has talent. Oh, now, Catherine, I think it's taken talent for Dennis to become a lieutenant of detectives at his age. What does a policeman have to know? The difference between a red light and green. <laughs> ah, but music. Well, that's something else again. That was music? Oh, Dennis. Sit down, Father, and I'll bring you some coffee and cake. You'll have some cake, won't you, Timmy? Just some coffee, Mother. Black. Okay. My big brother been knocking my music, Father. Uh, uh, what is it? Bebop, jive? I'm afraid I'm a little backward about modern music. Nothing backward about your diplomacy, Father. Of course, I'm inexperienced in such matters. Well, I'm not, unfortunately. 
I saw too many eyes like his when I was working narcotics. He's taking something, Father. That's why I asked you to come over tonight. What am I to do? I'm an officer of the law. First, you must be certain, Dennis. Absolutely certain. I am certain. Certain of a lot of things. Most of all, what the truth will do to Mother. I hope you like the cake, Father. It's a new recipe. First time I've used it. Timmy has a future, Father. For him, the road ahead is going to lead to wonderful things. If he sticks to the middle of it, Mother, and observes all the speed laws. Oh, don't be so literal, Dennis. Father, it's been nice seeing you. Oh, Timmy, you're not going out. Oh, I won't be late, Mother of the Year. Good night, big brother. Oh, will you dig the look he's giving me, Father? He doesn't approve of my companions or the places I go. <laughs> Cellar joints, he calls them. But that's where the real jive is born. But you wanted some coffee, Timmy. Oh, well, give it to Dennis. It'll keep him awake until I get home. Good night, Mother. You're the greatest. Be seeing you, Father. Isn't it amazing how different brothers can be? Timmy, so artistic, so full of life. Dennis, so plodding and plain. Being plain is a rare virtue, Mother O'Brien. The plainest man who ever lived was born in Bethlehem. Come in. Dennis O'Brien, Father, what in a word with you? By all means, show me. Come right in. Oh, Father, I'm sorry to disturb you. Oh, that's quite all right. Sit down. Timmy will be here shortly. Timmy? Yes, I traced him by telephone. I located him in one of his cellar hangouts. Something happened, Dennis? Father, you know what that is? Hypodermic, isn't it? You know where I found it and when? Tonight, after you left, in Timmy's room. Hidden with all the cleverness of a veteran addict. Well, there must be some mistake. There's no mistake. Father, I'm a member of the police department. On or off the job, I have an obligation. Yes, I know that. But you've got to help me, Father. The most important thing is that my mother's faith and belief in Timmy remain unchanged. It's the other O'Brien boy, Father. Show him in, please. Come right in. Oh, hi, Father. Hey, what's the idea, Dennis, leaving that crazy message for me at the jive joint? On the table. I believe that's yours. What? What's mine? What are you talking about? It's no use, Tim. You know where I found it. Now take off your coat. You're listening to the less elegant O'Brien brother, Tim. Not the talented one. The cop. Tim, are you going to do as I say? What do you think you are? The police department? I may have to act like it if you don't do as I say. Now no. come out off of that coat. No, 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 the no Dennis. Come on. No. Dennis, no. Both arms like pin cushions, eh, Tim? You, uh, you planning on telling Mother? How can I keep it from her? Tim, how long have you been on it? Since I was 18. Three years right under my nose. But why, lad? Why? Well, you take the first one as a charge, and then you're hooked, you, you just can't stop. But have you tried? Really tried? Well, I, I thought it'd be easy that I could call a halt any time I wanted. No, I know I can't. I haven't got what it takes. Well, Father. Look, if you want to make a break to me, I'll help you. I do, Father, I do. But there's no time like the present to get started. I have a room upstairs which you can have. And you can stay in this house until you get well. Well, I hope you haven't laid this strong rope in the house. Rope to me? That's what I said, Father. You'll have to tie me down the first few nights. You'll have to nurse me. I, I make it rough. I don't know. I don't know. Timmy made a good fight of it, suffering the tortures of the damned. Cleveland. You know, Timmy loves to travel. He has a spirit of adventure. But not Dennis. He's an old stay at home. <laughs> Dear Mom, for the past week I've been playing in a little place called The Cat and the Fiddle. <laughs> Isn't that picturesque, Father? I'm eating well and getting plenty of sleep. Everything is fine. 
I should be home in about ten days. Oh, wonderful. Say hello to Father Ford and the big, lovable, dumb brother cop. <laughs> All my love. Timmy. Isn't that a sweet letter, Father? Mm, Timmy's a master of words. He is indeed. Who dare say Dennis here could write a good letter himself if he had a mind to? Well, I've never had one from him, so uh, of course I wouldn't know. Well, I, I've never been to Cleveland. Well, now, whose fault is that, may I ask? Look at Timmy the adventurer, leaving town in the middle of the night at a moment's notice. New worlds to conquer. I'd be happy if he just conquered this one. <laughs> oh, we're having a little celebration on the night Timmy gets back. Will you be able to come, Father? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Tomorrow, Father, we start tapering off on sedatives. you like Chicago, Timmy? That's where I met your father. Do you, uh, did you have a chance to see any of the city? Oh, no, 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 Mother. I, I was I had to stick pretty close to what I was doing. Uh -huh. You're looking on the worst for it, lad. Oh, your letters were so wonderful. I was telling Dennis, you really should write. And I agree. There's a bit of the fine Irish poet in me, little brother. Oh, there is indeed. <laughs> now, wouldn't you know? And Timmy's first night home. Anybody know you were coming home tonight, Tim? Did you write someone? No. No, Dennis, I swear I didn't. Well, what's the matter, Timmy? You're shaking like a leaf. It's all right, Mother. I, I'm still a little nervous from the plane. you cut from the Salvatore grocery store? We're gonna use it tonight. Oh, what's that? You'll be there, you hear? All right. All right, if you promise it'll be the last time. No, no, I'm off this stuff. you kill a Timmy O'Brien? Timmy O'Brien? That's your worry. I didn't step into the light by that street lamp. You mean she saw me? She knows me, that woman. Hurry, Frank, I need a shot. I wonder what's keeping Dennis. Shame on you, Timmy. You haven't even touched your food. Uh, good evening, all. I hope your dinner isn't ruined, Dennis. Oh, don't worry about it, Mother. Hot or cold, it doesn't make any difference to me. Dennis. Will you take a look at Timmy's plate? He doesn't eat a thing. How does he keep alive? Oh, don't worry about Timmy, Mother of the Year. Oh. Hi, Copper. Saw a friend of yours today. Yeah, who's that, Tim? Betsy Kelly. Remember the girl you used to be so crazy about? Betsy Kelly's in California, Tim. She's been... I was coming out of one of those cellar joints that you admire so highly. She was coming up the stairs. She had on a hat that was three feet tall, and her skirt was one of those billowy things, covered the whole doorway. Well, let's talk about her later. Hmm? She had on a sparkler as big as a goose egg. I, I couldn't keep my eyes off that flashing rock. Next time you see her, say hello, hmm? Oh, I will, big brother. I will. <laughs>
What are you doing in my room, big brother? I was waiting for you, Timmy. I want to talk to you. It'll have to be later. Huh? I'm all worn out. Wait me later, will you, Dennis? How long do you want to sleep, Tim? Oh, wake me a little before uh, 10 o'clock. Dennis, don't disturb him. Let him sleep. All these scraps of paper in the hall. Where in the world they come from? Scraps of paper? Oh, I spilled some trash. I'll clean it up. Oh. Oh, there's Father Ford. You better hurry, Mother, and get dressed. You'll be late. And you hopped up, punk. I want my dough from last night's job. Okay, where are you? In front of San Sagasta. I'll be there. Just, just take it easy. All right, let's have it. You've been giving my brother the junk. Come on, give. Where's he getting it? Where are you getting it? Big cop's asking questions. Big cop might not like some of the answers. I'll throw the book at you, you little rat. And you'll find your brother's name on all the pages. Don't start shoving me around, O'Brien. Remember, I wasn't the one seen by the Salvatores. The Salvatore? Now, Mama Salvatore, if it was Timmy you saw, that's what you're going to have to say. Is there something on your mind, Mama Salvatore? Yes. Why not? Something you haven't told us? When Timmy was a little boy, he come into the store, and all the time he bring me flowers. And so my husband, Luigi, say, Hello, Timmy. What can we do for you today? And Timmy say, I want a sundae with a whipped cream and a walnut. <laughs> Yes, I, I remember those days, Mama Salvatore, but that's not the point. Did you see Timmy at the cash register? It's, a, it's a pretty dark in the store. I don't know. What's the matter? You, you want your own brother to go to jail? If he's guilty of robbing your store, yes. I don't know. It's everything. It's very confused. I'm the one who's confused. The lieutenant represents the law. He only seeks justice. Now, if it was Timmy you saw, it's your duty to say so. Yes, I know. Uh, but one must see not only with the eyes, but with the heart, too. No, Father? Yes, Mama. With the heart, too. Then the heart did not see Timmy O'Brien. Okay, Pat, send him up. God's name. Now look, big brother, I didn't rob that grocery store. Yeah, I'm afraid I know that attitude, Tim. The same as the night the hypo wasn't yours. Well, let's not waste time. Let's see what we can do for you. Sure you haven't done that already? Come again? You cops are always framing somebody. It could be just my turn. Why, if you weren't my brother, I'd f you for that. Go ahead, I hear you guys are famous for that, too. Well, you're still hot if you wouldn't talk like that. Did you, did you not rob that grocery store? I told you I didn't do it. You're lying, Tim, you're lying. Take your hands off me, copy. You'd free me in a minute. You'd free me your own mother. I'm sorry I did that, Timmy. Dad never laid a hand on you. Oh, blessed Mary, I pray for the sons of Mother O'Brien, for the one who is weak and for the one who is strong, but beset by heartfelt difficulties. And I pray for the mother who bore them. Uh, all right, Cap. Uh, yeah, I'll take care of it. We'll okay the hideout, Lieutenant. You found it? 
Yeah, and they got a room full of stolen goods. There's fur, radios, cameras. Can we move in on tonight? I'll let you know, Mac. Right after the 10 o'clock call. Father Ford. Hello, Catherine. My, you're looking very smart this evening. <laughs> Mother, how long has it been since you've seen Aunt Carrie? Oh, uh, I guess about five years, Dennis. Well, haven't you got a birthday coming up pretty soon? Oh, now, Dennis, you know the date of your mother's birthday. I think it's wonderful what Dennis plans for you, Catherine. Now, just what kind of a deep, dark plot are you two up to? He's going to send you to see your sister in Florida as a birthday present. Dennis! Yeah, but you'll have to leave tomorrow. Oh, what? If I'm to get a discount on your transportation. Well, now, how about it? Florida should be lovely at this time of the year. But what about Timmy? Who'd prepare his meals? Now, never you mind about the boys. You're going to make this trip if I have to prepare the meals myself. Well, I declare. Yes, Dennis, I'd love to go. Then it's a deal. Well, does Timmy know about this wonderful present? Well, he's he's partially responsible for it, Mother. Well, what wonderful boys. You know, Father, I'm a very lucky woman. Wonderful boys. Usually with her, it's singular. Time and patience will take care of that. Now, if I can only keep it out of the papers. Oh, you can. The newspaper boys will give you a break. Well, I wonder how much influence the captain has with the gentlemen of the press. Are we moving on tonight? I may be sticking my neck out a mile, Mac. But there's only one way out. Make the arrest. Be sure to send us a card, Catherine. What time do you get to Miami, dear? I just adore to fly. I wonder where Timmy is. He promised to see me all. Oh, here's Helen now. It's about time Catherine Flame's just about ready to leave. Look, there must be, there's got to be some mistake. your own brother, Lieutenant. You're gonna stand by him at his trial? Lieutenant, do you feel like a hero or a heel? Look, there's nothing further that I can say. But you got the whole story, so now you'll excuse me. You know what the Lieutenant said, boy. Will you please go? Dennis, how could you do it? Oh, Mother, I beg of you, let's not talk about it now. Mother! You're Mrs. O'Brien. How do you feel about this? Which brother's side do you want, Mrs. O'Brien? Hey, bring your camera, Look, please. I told you guys to clear out of here. Now, get out fast. It's all right, gentlemen. You may stay. You might like the real story, not the one you printed in your papers. Mother, please. So that's why you wanted me out of town. You wanted me out of the way so you could arrest your brother. What had to be done, Mother? You must believe me. Timmy's not guilty of any of the things they said in the paper. Mother, stop it. He's your own flesh and blood, Dennis. Mother, for the love of God. Max, call Father Ford, will you please? <laughs> Would I be able to tell you an untruth, Catherine? Dennis has been with Timmy and has made him understand that it's for the best. Timmy will be sent to a place where a cure can be accomplished. Dennis did it because it was his duty to the law. No, I don't understand. I... <laughs> we did everything we could do to help him and to spare you the pain of the truth. Now look at me, Catherine. Look at me. Believe me, you're not going to lose Timmy, and you're going to find Dennis. Oh, Father. Now, 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 just you stop that crying. And prove to me that you're the real Mother O'Brien. <laughs> Lieutenant Dennis O'Brien, please. Put love into your voice. Believe me, he deserves it. Hello? Dennis? There, just a moment. There's someone here who wants to speak to you. I 
Hello. Dennis. Darling. I don't know how to begin. I... My mother, O'Brien. Please forgive me, darling. Today, narcotics addiction among teenage boys and girls is at an all-time high and appears to be on a steady rise. Drug addiction and crime go hand in hand. The addict will steal money to buy drugs or stage other crimes while under the influence of, of false courage. Now, Dennis O'Brien knew these facts, as I know them, as everyone should know them. But he had the courage to realize that the only way he could help his brother was the hard way. And he was right. Timmy is completely cured today. God grant the same relief for other unfortunates. For verily, I repeat the words of your Redeemer. Ye are your brother's keeper.